Okay, final section for today. And uh, again, numerical experiment. And uh, now we have several algorithms for solving the inverse radon problem. We have filter back projection, which is optimal in some sense. And uh, we have the EM algorithm that takes into account the statistical nature of emission tomography measurements. Um, the question, of course, is uh, does it make any difference? Right? I mean, now I have a data set and I'm using the wrong algorithm, so will that actually make a difference? And uh, all I want to do with uh, what I'm showing you here is um, to convince you, yes, it does. It really makes a difference and it makes a big difference. Um, since that's all I want to do, then uh, the program I'm showing you is completely inefficient. It's uh, on a very bad discretization. I'll tell you why. Uh, but uh, the only outcome that I would like you to take here is, okay, that makes a difference and it's a good idea to take the statistical nature into account if it actually is, uh, if the uh, quantity we are looking at is actually the realization of a random process. Okay, so uh, let me look at that. So this is an implementation more or less of the EM algorithm. I'll be using an implementation of the filter back projection algorithm. You have one as well, and I'm using that, that just for comparison here. And uh, as usual, I will uh, give you the algorithms and the programs so you can play around with it if you like. Okay, uh, first of all, we generate the data for the Shep Logan Phantom. And you see this is a, the modified Shep Logan Phantom in a very, very bad resolution. And uh, the uh, reason uh, that I'm not doing a better job here is um, the program is so inefficient when I raise the resolution just a little bit more, everything will explode. So uh, I leave it at this bad resolution, but we'll see the main effect anyway. Okay, and uh, note that uh, uh, this is the modified Shep Logan Phantom and the intensities are in the range from zero to one as usual. Okay, then we generate a radon data for that phantom. And note that uh, this radon data has not been produced using this bad image over here, but uh, that it has been computed directly analytically as you uh, did it in one of your homeworks. And um, so it's uh, the correct radon transform of the true modified Shep Logan phantom, but sampled on a very coarse grid. And you can see that because we have, well, the, this image, the resolution of this data uh, image is, is very bad as well. Um, we have, I think, something like 20, um, 20 directions in which we are viewing the radon transform and something like 40. Um, sensors measuring in each di uh, direction. Okay, um, so if we do the filter back projection from that, uh, the result is not too good. And um, that's due to the fact that uh, the resolution of the sensors is low. Um, but, but anyway, you can see some of the main features. So you can definitely see the skull over here, the outer bone, you can vaguely see the circle over here. You can see the uh, two main ellipses. You can't expect more with this back resolution, but that's what you get out. Okay, so that's filter back projection and uh, it's what you can get. And it's on, um, um, there's no noise added at this point. So um, this is the best you can really get. And uh, I should add omega, P, Q, everything has been chosen in an optimal way. So that's the best you can come up. Okay, now uh, let's simulate a Poisson measurement. Now, what was a Poisson me measurement? Um, the, uh, for, the, for emission tomography, uh, the, um, the um, T0 times the measured value of the, times the value of the radon transform, that's the mean value of the um, blip. 
sorry, I had to recollect myself. So uh, in emission tomography, every measured value is the realization of a random variable, which is Poisson distributed, and the lambda, so the, the, mean, the mean value of each single measurement, is the radon measurement times the time t0 in which we view the emission. Okay, so uh, all I have to do is take the radon data over here, multiply it with T0, and for each of the pixels here, uh, generate one draw from a Poisson, uh, from a Poisson distributed variable with where the lambda is uh, just this T0 times the value that is over here. Okay, so I do that. And now what comes out is something like this over here. First of all, if there's um, the, um, all the in numbers in that data set should now be integer because uh, these are number of events measured or with respect to the Poisson uh, distribution. Um, these are drawn from a Poisson distributions and they are all integer, right? Okay. So uh, you see that uh, the noise is quite high here. Um, I, I think I chose something like 20 seconds observation time here. So um, you can hardly see that uh, um, the data over here is actually generated by this data here, right? I mean, uh, these are the the medium value, the mean value. So over here, for let's look at some examples so we understand what uh, how the data is um, is generated. Over here, obviously, the radon transform is zero, so the radioactivity on the corresponding line is zero, and so to get this value up here, we draw one um, number from a Poisson distribution. With medium with mean value zero, but that's completely zero, so we draw a zero over here. Okay, over here at this point, the uh, radon transform is high, so it has a high value. So uh, we draw now. We, at this point, we draw um, one number from a Poisson distribution where lambda is relatively high. So the ch chance of getting a high value is high as well. And well, yeah, you can see, okay, well, I was lucky here. So the value is actually a little bit higher, but of course this is a random distribution, right? This is just random. And um, so uh, um, you find that uh, this does not look, really look like uh, the, um, like, uh, the data we had over here. Um, Please also keep in mind that this happens only when T0 is small. If T0 is extremely large, uh, then we should probably have um, a, an image here that looks much more like the data. And maybe I should try this. Um, I didn't. So uh, I just said uh, a long observation time, so 3000. Yeah. And now it looks, if we, have, if we wait for a very, very long time, then uh, the chance that uh, we get um, just the expected value for, our, um, for the number of emissions on one line would get higher. Yeah? So uh, we, if, we, if we, we view for a long time, for a very long time, this will look very much like the radon transform, but it would also mean that the patient would have to lie there for a very long time, and it would mean that he has to endure a high radioactivity. So um, we are always interested in minimizing the time for the patient and in minimizing uh, the exposure for the radioactive exposure for the patient. So uh, um, that should be sm as small as possible. And uh, by the way, a typical time for such um, an experiment with the, it's not an experiment uh, for for undergoing such a treatment in the hospital is something like 30 minutes so that's already long enough okay uh but now let's go back to the bad data so this is something that we'll have to expect 
um, for um, from in the hospital. And uh, let's look what uh, the filter back projection does from that. And well, that's the same filter back. That's filter back projection, and uh, that looks extremely bad, right? I mean, it, I can hardly see anything. Um, I mean, you vaguely see the shape of the head here, but apart from that, everything's more or less gone. Let me be frank, you could be um, a, a little bit better by improving the filters. I, I just took Ramlak here and uh, took an optimal Omega. If you don't do that, if you, if, if you play around with this a little bit, then uh, um, the image gets, image gets a little bit better, but not substantial. And the reason is simply we are using the wrong reconstruction formula, right? I mean, that was more or less for unperturbed data, maybe, and you can show that it stays optimal for um, uh, for, norm, for uh, normally distributed noise, but this noise is completely different. And this is not noise, right? This is Poisson distributed. So um, we get something that looks bad, and uh, we know what we have to do. We'll have to use the EM algorithm. And um, don't laugh when you see how I implemented that here. Uh, I told you never build that matrix. It always has to be used on the fly. But of course, what I'm doing here is I'm just building up the system matrix and um, in a very, very inefficient way. And that's the reason why I can't drive up the resolution. OK, now uh, A is my, um, my system matrix. I think that was what, we, what I used in the lecture as well. And um, I just check that when applying A to the discretized image, uh, then uh, I get more or less the same data as from the analytical image. So let's compute A. F for the discrete image. Yeah, that's the data this, uh, um, um, generated from the discrete image above just by multiplying my system matrix with the image over here with a, um, a vector of pixel uh, values. And uh, so this is what comes out there. And the data I'm actually using is this one over here. That's the unperturbed data. That's the original data that I started with. Of course, that's not the Poisson data here. And you see, well, there's quite some similarity, right? I mean, it's not too good because the resolution is bad. But more or less, the system matrix describes our um, an analytic operator. OK, but now implementation of EM is extremely simple. We have that f k plus 1 is f times 1 over a transpose 1, which is nothing but the normalizer over here, times a transpose applied to the data over a times f. And uh, I uh, added an integration parameter or um, an iteration parameter over here, like you always do in iterative um, schemes. And I think I'll set it to 0 0.1 here. OK, so let's have something like 30 iterations. And I'll show you what the 30th iteration then looks like. I'm starting with f equal to 1. So the, uh, at the beginning, the complete image is equal to 1. And then I implement. Um, in the EM algorithm as we had it in the lecture, um, you'll immediately find that this suffers from a lot of problems, right? I mean, AF may be zero and a lot of other things may happen. I'm completely skipping that here. Uh, and that's why the result that I'm now showing you is not optimal. OK, I said it's not optimal, but it's not too bad. Right? I mean, you definitely can see the shape. You definitely can see the two ellipses over here. Well, kind of at least. And, um, and uh, well, if you're if you're generous, you can also see see the circle up here. So um, that's not too bad. I mean, re remember the resolution was extremely bad. We had an extremely strong error on it. Uh, and uh, just for comparison, this is what filter back projection delivered. So this is much, much better than that. 
And uh, believe me, it's that the fact that it's not uh, even better than that is really due to the fact that uh, the discretization is so bad here. Okay, so uh, what you should take from this, the only thing you should take from this is number one, um, it can be implemented very simply, as you can see. But number two, the important thing is um, taking into account the correct statistical nature of the problem is crucial for getting good results. One remark I should make, um, the EM algorithm, for example, is notoriously slow. And um, if you think of it, then the EM algorithm looks a little bit like um, what we did for, uh, it looks like uh, we should be able to do here exactly the same thing that we already did for the Landweber, um, uh, for the Landweber scheme. Um, in Landweber, it turned out that it's not a good idea to use all the data once, but uh, it's much better to partition the data, take one data set uh, um, um, after each other in the catch marks algorithm, and the question is, could we do exactly the same here? And of course, that's the case. Uh, what you uh, end up with is not EM, but OSEM, ordered subset expectation maximization algorithm, uh, which just means, okay, instead of taking all the data once, like I uh, should show you, of course, I use the complete matrix over here. I use all the data in each step. And uh, if you don't do that, but use the uh, data from one direction, from one projection here, then everything gets much simpler, gets, gets much more efficient. And uh, again, you can drastically reduce the total number of iterations. So, 